Hello everyone, welcome back to Linked Frequency. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about complete Arduino Nano development board design using the Easy EDA tool. This is the 20th tutorial of practice project for PCB designers and I am Vaibhav Sugandhi, passionate PCB designer and technology startup founder. First thing first, this tutorial is going to be the last part of the practice project for PCB designers and I am very sure this is going to be insightful and very exciting for those who have practiced all the projects so far in PCB industry. First thing, we are going to design this Arduino Nano development board which are available in the DIY segment of online community and you are going to use that product for your project in the future. That level of design we are going to try in this tutorial. I have divided this tutorial into three parts so that it will be easy for you to understand and video will not be more complicated or more longer one. First part is going to be a uh, analysis or a design activity where we will be talking on only black box analysis, white box analysis and a bit of activity with respect to data sheet analysis and a morphological chart. However, in the second tutorial, we are going to design a complete schematic for Arduino Nano development board. Third tutorial or the third part of 20th tutorial is going to be a PCB layout design and fabrication file generation. This is how we divided our 20th episode of practice project for PCB designer into three parts. Let's get started with the first part. Here we have a black box analysis for Arduino Nano development board. First thing is we need to have a power supply input connector where we will be giving a power to the entire board. One source of the power to this entire Arduino Nano development board is a USB cable where there is a programming as well as USB connection where we will get the 5 volt power supply. However, we cannot connect the USB for all the time especially when you want to make a project portable on that time you can connect a battery or a variable power supply or adapter or any source of power dc power supply to our entire board by means of two pin connector here this is not a exactly a extended two pin connector it is an integrated part of all the connectors given in the arduino nano like this you can see here left side and right side there are so many connectors within which there is a one pin called v in i think it is somewhere here V in and ground, that pin is nothing but a power supply pin. That is where we connect our power input ranging from 9 volt to 12 volt at any point of time. And after that, we will be having a voltage regulators. Regulator or regulators is a choice. Why? Because whenever we want to make our entire project compatible with the 3.3 volt as well as 5 volt, then we have to design a two stage regulation. First stage is all about converting this input voltage into a 5 volt and then a 5 volt into a 3.3 volt but most of the low cost and a very cheap Arduino Nano development board they use the voltage divider network or voltage divider circuit to convert 5 volt DC into a 3.3 volt DC on that time a single regulator is sufficient for us which one to use which part number to select again it is a different story we'll talk about it in a bit but right now do remember voltage regulator or regulators are required in this entire project thereafter we will be having the power indicator LEDs just to indicate the board is turned on or board is powered up. Thereafter, we will be having an output connector where we will be connecting our peripherals to a specific voltage as per the requirement. For example, 5 volt, 3.3 volt, or maybe a direct VIN pin connected to the sensor or actuators to the entire board. And this particular voltage rail will be shared with the entire PCB so that the entire microcontroller circuit will be powered up with that. Thereafter, we'll be having a main controlling unit, which is the main part of the entire design activity. At this point of time, we know it is an Arduino Nano development board, but do remember when you are doing a black box analysis, you will be not knowing that. That's why it is so called black box analysis not because of a color but because of unknown perceptivity so main controlling unit is going to be a known thing to us at this point of time with that particular main controlling unit we will be having a gpio connectors where they are open for any kind of a development so you are just dragging the gpios of that controller and making them available for the developer with the connector that's why we have given a couple of gpio connectors here which associates with the gpios of 
of a main controlling unit. Thereafter, we will be having the LED indicators to indicate a transmittance and a receptance a signal of the UART communication. UART communication is fundamentally based on USB to UART conversion or the serial communication between this main controller and the programming host. For example, uh, your computer, laptop or any device which is programming this microcontroller. And whatever communication happening between them will be indicated by two LEDs called RX LED and TX LED. Along with that, we will also give one extra LED just to indicate power status or maybe a signal status or maybe a pulse of this entire microcontroller. It's like a development uh, board and on which we will be having a built-in LED. The, those kind of LEDs are connected together in a one segment and we call them as LED indicators. We will be having a programming connector here which is nothing but a USB to UART converter. Maybe we can use Silicon Labs uh, IC or maybe we can use a FTDI IC. Choice is ours which we will be discussing in the later part of the design. But right now we are going to use the USB to UART converter and that particular converter section is so called programming connector. Thereafter we will be having a reset button. This reset button is very essential as you are using this as a development board. Whenever you use a development board you will be writing a lot of test code to test on the real time. Whenever you are writing a code you have to press a reset to reset the microcontrollers to start executing from the beginning. If you don't have this reset button then it will be very difficult to do a power cycle. What do you mean by power cycle? You have to remove the power connection from the power supply input or maybe from the USB connection and then you have to power it on. Every time removing and connecting the USB cable will be a tedious job and it will degrade the quality of a USB connections. That's why it is always better to have a SMD small scale or a small size reset button on the board whenever you are designing a development board. That's why this particular block diagram is also having a reset button here. This is how the black box of a Arduino Nano development board looks like. Of course, it is a very simple one. We can still add several parts to this particular black box analysis and make it even more a comprehensive or maybe we can make it even more better understanding with respect to the real time Arduino Nano development board. However, as we are dealing with the beginners and I believe you people are yet to learn a lot of things in the industry. That's why I'm keeping this black box analysis straight to the point and whatever minimalistic possibility we can do that. Now let's jump into the white box analysis. This is how white box analysis looks like. First thing is we will be using the header connectors with a 2.54 mm pitch in the entire PCB. No matter whether it is a power connection or whether it is a GPIO connection, we will be using the same header. Why? Because we have a very small space constraint. If you look at the image here, you can see that the entire board itself is somewhere around a 20 mm by a 50 mm max to max. It is a breadboard compatible and it should be as small as possible and it should be compact with all the working principle. I mean, all, all the circuits should work as well as it should be compact. That's why we don't have any possibility to use the connectors with a 5.08 mm pitch. The green color terminals which we use for power supplies and all, right? Those kind of a terminal connectors or those kind of a terminal block cannot be used in such small PCB. That's why we are going to use header connector of 2.54 mm. Thereafter, we'll be choosing the LM1117 5.0 SMD regulator IC for conversion of whatever input voltage coming to this entire board into a 5 volt DC. Here again, why I have chosen the LM1117? It's my choice. Based on my morphological chart, based on my requirement, based on the maximum current that I want in this entire PCB, I have selected 1117. But if you do your own morphological chart, if you do your own data sheet analysis then you may come up with the different options go ahead with that not a necessary that you have to follow this one only but do understand you have to complete a morphological chart and a data sheet analysis before arriving at a white box analysis or while filling the white box analysis you can consider like that in my case i have done my morphological chart and came up with the lm 1117 5.0 because it is a 800 milli ampere of a current rating and a very small size uh, package which is absolutely suitable for such kind of a development board design 
fan activity thereafter we will be having a r led which is a red color led that to o8 o5 smd component i hope you remember from the beginning of ir sensor we started using a smd resistor smd leds and those smd leds are nothing but o8 o5 package o6 o3 package o4 o2 package whichever is suitable for the applications we will select according to that right now i am going to select the o8 o5 r led again we will be having a header connector for the output connection where we will be getting a 5 volt and 3.3 volt do remember here i am using a voltage divider network to convert 5 volt into a 3.3 volt for external peripheral powering up my entire microcontroller will be powered up by 5 volt and my entire peripherals will be working with the 5 volt dc only 3.3 volt is not for internal working principle or internal communication or anything inside internal this entire pcb not necessary with the 3.3 volt that's why i'm using a voltage divider network to reduce the cost of another regulator that's how cost optimization happens in the product design engineering now we'll be using a smd button for the reset option which is straightforward and very easy to understand thereafter we will be having a usb to uart converter circuit here right now i have not decided which usb to uart converter to be used here i prefer to go with the ftdi 2323 chip actually but cp2102 is also a beneficial one which we will be deciding while we are doing a schematic design of course you should not be doing that at the white box analysis you will be knowing which particular part number of ic you are using in your design activity but right now i would like to keep it open because there are some things which i need to understand and define them in in our design activity that's why i'll i'll keep it open at this point of time thereafter smd leds again those are going to be o8 o5 package or maybe o4 o2 package again these are open for right now because based on the size based on the available space i will optimize the size of the pcb or optimize the size of leds as per the available size and all so this is how our white box analysis looks like now i would like to tell you one thing uh, everyone just make sure that you complete the black box analysis according to your understanding use my design or use my black box analysis as a reference do not copy it actually because by copying you will not learn anything you will not innovate anything think by your own self think by your own thought process put your own activities put your own understanding to create your own black box analysis thereafter do your white box analysis with the help of morphological chart and the data sheet analysis once you are done with your white box analysis if necessary consider my example of white box analysis as a reference but again if you create your own white box analysis and if you are more happy with that particular thing go ahead there is no restriction to try out a new things by your own self that's where you become a pcb designer right so these things are need to be done in the part 1 of episode 20 of creating a complete arduino nano development board using a easy eda i hope you understood the concepts here i hope you complete your activity here by referring a data sheet by referring the morphological chart and a white box analysis probably you will come up with this circuit diagram on your paper it's a paper activity that's why i have not shown in in the slide actually so you have to draw it on the paper and create a circuit diagram for this entire project thereafter we'll start with the schematic in the next part of episode 20 thank you so much for watching this video guys see you again in the next video until then tune yourself to make a difference